Hello everyone, so I welcome you in this very important topic. I should say the most important topic in special senses auditory pathway. Okay, guys. So if you are an MBBS first year student, this topic will definitely come in your final year exams. And that's why I have made it in such a manner that it can serve both the purpose conceptual as well as how to write an exam. Okay. And, and in MCQ discussions. So we will see the auditory pathway in detail. There is again a question at the end. Mnemonic is also there at the end. And you have to answer that in comments and you can connect with me on all of this platform. So let's begin with auditory pathway guys. Okay. So this is the auditory pathway which we need to talk about. Okay. Now auditory pathway is very easy. I can tell you auditory pathway in two minutes also, but I will explain you and give you the text which you need to, you know, write. You can't just simply draw the flow chart that this happens. You need to have a language for that. Okay. So let's focus on language part and we will see what is needed. So first of all, whenever you will. Uh, you know write auditory pathway you should always start from external ear itself okay so it's your external ear which transmitted sound to middle ear then came your inner ear okay we have already talk, uh, talked about this in our previous classes now in auditory pathway usually you write from inner ear and in that you start from after or uh, organ of corti okay so you have to write in this manner external middle some some information about middle ear impedance matching and all that then internal and then start with organ of corti so what is auditory pathway which we as such tell from organ of corti basically i have told you an organ of corti in apparent information that i have already told you that cochlear nerve was supplying the organ of corti ke hair cells hai na? or the cochlear nerve was supplying and that ganglion which they form was spiral ganglion of corti okay so that part is already covered which can also be said as nerve number eighth okay so now we will proceed ahead of that so basically this is your organ of corti and from here we will see this pathway so nerve fibers from the spiral ganglion of corti enter the dorsal and ventral cochlear nuclei okay now you will make two levels medulla or you can simply write brainstem or you can further divide it spawns midbrain and then your basically midbrain and then your cerebral cortex okay so now what they are saying that spiral ganglion of corti then it will enter the cochlear nuclei this is your cochlear nuclei which we are talking about at the level of upper part of medulla so you can see in this diagram okay so now they have entered this now the fibers will synapse and then this is first order so second order neuron will basically pass and now you can see that majority of them are passing to the contralateral side so majority of them will pass to the opposite side in the brain stem and they will relay to superior olivary nucleus is that clear so this is the first thing which you need to know superior olivary nucleus after cochlear nuclei so now some fibers although go in the same direction and majority goes in the opposite direction okay so this is the clear picture right now now let's proceed ahead so now what you will see is that now we will see the story ahead from superior olivary nucleus now fiber passes upward through the lateral lemniscus okay I have already told you in CNS videos also what is lemniscus and all those things kindly watch all those videos because these are interlinked topic I can't explain everything right now okay so now this is your lateral lemniscus and now it will serve as a connection for superior olivary to your ultimately up above pathway okay so now fiber will pass through the lateral lemniscus now some fiber will terminate here only okay you need not to worry about them but majority of them will go to the inferior colliculus. So this is how you do the things. Superior olivary, inferior colliculus. Is that okay guys? So now the fibers are basically traveling to inferior colliculus. From here, they will go to medial geniculate nucleus. Medial geniculate nucleus in the midbrain. Is that okay? So this is all you need to know regarding this particular pathway right now. Now what happens is that the pathway will proceed to the auditory cortex which is your primary auditory cortex and it is located in the superior gyrus of temporal lobe. I have already told you about cortex. I will tell you again about that. But right now have you understood this much pathway? So if I tell you basically this is the whole pathway. So you started from your cochlear nuclei then superior olivary, lateral lemniscus, inferior colliculi, medial geniculate and cortex. This is all you need to know regarding the pathway now let's focus what are all the features which you need to write and then cerebral cortex so basically what are the two features which you will write in your exam or you need to know as such first is your contralateral pathway theory 
Now, what does this mean is basically if you here is your brain and they say if there is suppose any hemorrhage or any injury to a one side of brain, hearing function are not affected that much. And this is because like signals from both the ears are transmitted through the pathway of both side of the brain, but preponderance is in contralateral pathway. So even if one side of the brain may get damaged, but from the other side, person will get the hearing stimuli. So this is the thing which you need to know regarding contralateral pathway. Now the other point which you need to know is collateral fiber. So what is collateral fiber wali theory? So basically whenever auditory tract will pass, it will not pass straight forward as I have told you in that above diagram. It will start giving collaterals to some other structures as well. And what are those two structures which you need to remember? Reticular activating system. Okay. And also secondly, vermis of the cerebellum. So these two structures you need to remember. And now you can relate why. Reticular activating system has got activation wala function. Okay. So now whenever there will be a sudden loud sound, the reticular activating system will get activated. This will make you aware. Okay, and vermis of the cerebellum will be responsible for postural changes in a loud noise, sudden loud noise. Why? Suppose, ekdam se kutta bhokta hai. Okay, dog barks, there is a very loud noise and now you need to run, you need to stay aware. Hai na? Aap so ho nahi basically. Okay, so this is the thing which is responsible for that. So it has all got a practical relation. So these are some points which will fetch you more marks or give a much greater impact but you should also know for practice. So now uh, cortex, so I have already told you in cerebral cortex video, kindly watch that if not watched. Temporal lobe has functions related to hearing. You know, we discussed tempo, hearing. Okay, so now I have already told you that this is your auditory cortex. There is primary auditory area and auditory association area. 20, 21, 22 are auditory association and 41 is the primary auditory area location is in temporal gyrus okay guys so kindly refer that video also now something about cortex so basically whenever you will see cortex as a whole there has been written a line in Guyton that there are at least at least six tonotropic maps now what tonotropic maps means that someone says someone is playing piano okay so each tone has a particular area in the brain which perceive that particular uh, sound okay so this is the thing that you need to know that each of the separate area will dissect out specific feature of the sounds. So these are just some heavy words, but you should know them. Okay. So this is all in all. And this is the example. Like this is, I'm saying that this is your cortex. Then you can see that there are some areas which will detect low frequency. Some areas will detect high frequency. Primary association cortex. I hope you are well versed with. Okay, guys. So now things are very easy. And now let's talk about mnemonic. So this is not my own made mnemonic. This is a very famous mnemonic which we have learned from our first year and I don't know who has made it but it is the most famous. So I thought I should not you know modify it. You can simply remember 8th now we already talked. Then we talked cochlear nuclei. Okay. In the upper part of medulla. Then your superior olivary nuclei. Then lateral lemniscus, inferior colliculus, medial geniculate body. Auditory cortex, we are done with this video. We are done with auditory cortex. Time for you to answer this question in comment box. Okay, very easy question. But you should also know which geniculate body is concerned with visual functions. So try answering both of them and stay connected. Please watch other videos, especially of CNS physiology after this. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Stay healthy guys.